Hi again from the Richard and Judy Book Club, exclusively with uh, WH Smith. And I'm just going to shamelessly plagiarise uh, to introduce this next fantastic novel, Jamrak's Menagerie by Carol Birch. I'm just going to read one of the references on the back. It says, put Moby Dick, Treasure Island and the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner into a pot, add a pinch of Dickens and you will get the flavour of Carol Birch's hugely entertaining novel. That's one of many enormously good reviews for this book. Hello, Carol. Lovely Hello. to see you. Um, I, I make no bones about it. I think this is the best book I've read in 15 years. Well, I think it's amazing. an absolute masterpiece. It's an extraordinary piece of writing. It, it's set in the Victorian era in London, mm -hmm. and we start with a little boy um, in, in, in Bermondsey. Uh, yes. He's only about eight years old. And one of the first episodes that we see is based on an actual incident that happened. Right. Would you just talk us through it? Because it's an extraordinary yes, story. Yes, it's a true story. Uh, obviously, the little boy is different, but it's sure. a true story. There was a man called Jamrak who did have a menagerie on uh, uh, what was then known as Ratcliffe Highway, now known as just the highway. Um, and this was mid-19th century. Mm -hmm. And um, it, this was where all the uh, boats from all over the world, the ships came in from everywhere, all over the world. And people were starting to... Um, collect wild animals. The mm. people were starting their own little collections. Yes, it was de rigueur, wasn't it? If you had yes. money and, and yes. a large property, it was de rigueur to have an exotic animal. Rossetti, for example, had, had a whole lot of uh, exotic creatures in his garden. Right. right. Yes. Right. Because, of course, of this was yes. long before television and nobody yes. knew what they looked like. I mean, nobody, you know... It was still a big attraction a to huge, go and see yeah. this. And, and he had, like, in the middle of the East End, which was a very poor area, he had this menagerie full of, you know, all the kind of wild beasts, like the elephants, you name it, he had them there. Elephants, to be sold giraffes, on to the gentry. Yeah. To be sold on to the gentry and to zoos and collectors and so on. Hmm. And the story is, and it's a true story, that um, uh, this tiger, a Bengal tiger that had been brought across the sea, and the poor thing must have had an awful voyage, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, because of this, the, uh, the cage, the wooden cage it was in was rotten, and it rotted away, and it pushed out of the cage and went walking off down the Ratcliffe Highway. <laughs> Everybody ran away, of course, but this little eight-year-old boy, uh, not knowing any better, having never seen a tiger and not knowing mm. what it was, went up and uh, was fascinated by it and, and stroked its nose. Mm. Uh, whereupon it, it uh, understandably knocked him off his feet, carried him away down an alley. In its and, jaws? Um, in its jaws. Mm. Uh, he was very, very lucky because um, Jamrak himself came, apparently, came out and uh, got hold of it and throttled it throttled it till it let him go and he he was not much the worse for wear apparently very shaken and shocked he did have to go to hospital I think but, but anyway, I took that incident as a starting point I mm. became fascinated by what that would do to a child of eight to be just kind of walking down an ordinary street mm. in, in the east end of London. Well, what it does to Jaffe, suddenly, what it does yes. to Jaffe, the little boy in question, as he grows up, he gets him a job mm. at the menagerie. He does. Um, just basically cleaning out the stables and shoveling poo, yes. animal poo, basically. Yeah. But it, it, it demonstrates from that very first incident that he has a natural rapport with, animals. with wild animals. Uh, he, can, he has a calming effect on them. He understands them in some instinctive way. Mm -hmm. um, and he uh, loves them. He, he's fascinated. And he loves them, yes. He, likes to look, he wants to look into their eyes mm. and sort of try and connect Mm. But Carol, yeah. your description of Victorian London, um, uh, I mentioned Dickens, I think Dickens would be proud of some of the oh, ways you, you. Uh, really, some of the ways, don't be too modest because it's brilliant, <laughs> some of the ways that you describe the smells, the sounds, mm. the sights. How did you research that? How did you get hold of I that? I just read a lot of stuff and, okay. and looked on the internet and just generally used my imagination and, you know. Yeah. Just, we'll just say Google, that. that'll I mean, do it. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it really is brilliant. And then of course Jaffe grows up um, yeah. and when he's about 16, still working at the menagerie, um, uh, someone says they would they want a dragon. Somebody mm. has says that it's dragons have been spotted in yes. round Java. Yes, uh, in the now, islands. In those days, of course, nobody really people were, I suppose were still thinking of dragons that breathed fire mm -hmm. and had wings the mythical, and all the, the rest mythical. of it. Yeah. yeah, the mythical dragon. So they don't know what they're they expecting. Don't know what they're expecting. No idea. So Jaffe goes on this expedition mm -hmm. to find this mythical dragon and bring it back. Yes, and the, what he. The, the ship they're travelling on is a whaler, a whaling mm -hmm. ship. A whale ship. Because then um, whale oil and catching whales and whale oil was, was immensely lucrative, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yes, but by the time Jaffe goes, it is actually coming to the end of its, mm. uh, its time. Right. Uh, because around about this time, they were also then just discovering that there were other ways of getting oil. Right. Um, and the whaling was probably coming to an end, you know, but it was right. still big. It was still quite big when he went. Um, but yes... Um, 
He also, I mean, this dragon that we were talking about mm -hmm. was actually, I mean, it's actually a Komodo dragon that mm. they yeah. go and find, obviously. Um, it's not a mythical beast with wings and... Still no, but they're still... Pretty they, they, they don't know then. that, you know, no, because no. They, all they know... Are, because the, the Komodo dragon wasn't actually known about in the West until, I think, 1912. Right. Gosh. Which is, Gosh. I was surprised by that. Yeah, me too. How late yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, before that, it was simply rumours and travellers' tales and saying yeah. that there's this big dragon like beast somewhere in these islands. Right. And that bones had been found on beaches and so on. And yeah. quite scary tales. So it was quite a scary expedition they were going on. They didn't know what they were going to find. And yeah. in order to finance themselves, just in case they don't find a dragon mm. and they don't get the money for yes. it when they bring it back, as you say, they go on an, an old whaling ship, mm -hmm. a good ship, but it's an old yes, one. Yes, but it's an old one. Uh, and they have to catch whales en route for the yes, oil in they, order to they finance do. They it. They actually go whaling. Your description, halfway through the book, maybe less than halfway through the book, of how they actually catch a sperm whale. Mm. And of course, in those days, there were, there were no harp, it was explosive harpoons. harpoons. It, it was, was just a boy with a spears, harpoon throwing Absolutely. it into a whale. And in a rowing boat, they'd have to row alongside the whales as fast yes. as they could. And uh, also, when they get back onto the ship, they've got all the. Oh. They've got to actually manufacture it. To yeah. Get the oil out of it. Yeah. 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 Horrible, horrible chapter, job. That yes. chapter is unbelievably written. It's extraordinary. It, you, you could be there in the, in the whaling boat with them. And the mm. goriness and the brutality of what they were doing um, is amazing. Also, the scale of the ship, yeah. which must mm. have been to kind of accommodate the whale, and then later on, I mean, I don't, it's not giving anything away mm. to say later on the dragon. You know, yes, they, yes. They had enormous resources under, underneath mm. the deck. They had the whole, well, it was like a sort of floating factory, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. had what they called the tripods in the middle of the deck where they would actually, uh, you know, somebody would, they would hang the whale meat, the blubber, from the mast somewhere so it hung mm. down then somebody would come and cut it up into strips That's right and all these va various processes they went through yeah. and then they would boil it up in these tripods which yeah. apparently the stench of it was pretty horrible mm. and the whole deck yeah. was taken over by this well, it's process a, it's, a, it's a thrilling chapter the whole crew would take part in the process yeah and, and I, I also yes. have to say what you've managed to capture here is the age of the potential for ordinary men to make big discoveries Mm. I mean, now we know how the world works. We know we where all the do. countries are. Well, we think. We know. You know what I'm saying. I'm sure. Yes. We, well, I'm sure we could find a new species of butterfly in the deep Amazon. But we ain't going <laughs> to yes. find a dragon anymore. I mean, you know, we we, yeah. we know where they are, um, and we know where the countries are. Mm. But back then, back in the 1850s, 1860s, there, it was still possible for ordinary yeah. men to go out into the world with courage That's true. and and discover new things and mm. bring them home. And you really capture that in the book. Mm -hmm. And the capturing the the, the capture of the of the dragon is, mm -hmm. is extraordinarily exciting. But to me, the real, the part of the book which I absolutely love most is what happens next, and I With don't want to spoil it no, for no, people. I, know what you mean. I don't for want to spoil me, it. The, the voyage th home. That was the, the voyage, voyage home, voyage home yes. uh, which is extraordinary and 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 very dramatic and and, and traumatic, but 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 beautifully written. And I, I I have to say this: I think if you'd if you were a man and you'd written that book, I don't think I would have loved it as much because really? I no because I think that you I think that a man would have been more concerned with the kind of the externals of the adventure. But you really get into Jaffe and his friend and mm. the sea captain. That's what I was interested in was was what uh, you know the emotional the connection that people make in, That's in right. extreme situations. That's right. And, and it is a very important. without getting you know yes. without letting anything get away i mean they it is a very extreme situation at the end of the book it is. and the most extraordinary voyage and the way they all cope with it and their their love for each other yeah. and their emotions but this is what this moves me when i read accounts of people who have gone through extreme situations and yeah so on. it's not um you know the the gruesome side of it or the horrible no, side of no. it. it it's what it's the way it brings out this incredible love humanity people, really. yeah this humanity well that's what comes and that's over what i thought you know really that's what interested me yeah was, and also how people who have survived these mm. afterwards carry that forward yeah. and take something out of it. Yeah. That it's not, I, didn't, I didn't want it to be just a kind of, uh, you know, Epic dear, horrible story. things happen, no, 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 not, no. not just an adventure story. You know, no, but, it's but not. It, to it's, me, it was actually brilliant. quite a positive thing, you know, the way... Yes, the way absolutely. Oh, it is, and, and rather beautiful, actually. Out That's of, what out I of, hope. Out of, the, out of this... <laughs> unbelievably ugly horrendous mm, something situation good comes. something beautiful actually something beautiful emerges comes. it's intense but it's there yeah. you know what it reminded me of a um, very famous book of which a film was made the cruel sea which was about yes. the atlantic convoys in the second world war i haven't and read it but i've seen the film yes. okay mm. well the book is infinitely better than the film okay. as, as they usually are yes. um but i can i can tell you that that also is a love story it's a story mm. about the love of the men on these serving ships in extreme situations yes. you know being sub yes. submarine and, and all what the rest it brings of it. out and what it brings out in them mm. and what it turns them into mm. and that's what happens in this book as well mm -hmm. on this voyage uh, 
It's remarkable. Um, as I say, it's, I'm really not over, over egging this. <laughs> it's one of the best books I've ever read. Thank you. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Thank um, you so much. And it's very, very readable. Really an easy book to, to get drawn into and to sail away with. Jamrax Menagerie, Carol Birch. If you want to know more about it, more about Carol, uh, go to our website. That's at whsmith.co.uk forward slash Richard and Judy. Best book ever. <laughs>